Hello students. These are your literary element notes. Go ahead and fill in the blanks on your notes with the information in this presentation. Now before we begin, I do want to mention that literary elements are elements that are found in stories. Literature is a fancy word for a story. First we have the setting. Now the setting is where and when a story takes place, the location and time. Notice on the screen that I have underlined and highlighted in green the item that you need to fill in on your notes. So go ahead and write in story if you haven't done so yet. Next, item two is point of view, otherwise known as POV. Go ahead and write underneath where it says point of view. Go ahead and write POV so you know what I mean when I talk about point of view. And looking at the right side of your notes there, it says the narrator's perspective or view of the story. This is the narrator is the voice telling the story. There are three types that I want to focus in on. The first is narrate, the first person POV or point of view is the narrator is a character in the story. The next is omniscient. This is the narrator is outside the story and the narrator knows more than one character's thoughts and feelings. They're not tied to one character's storyline. And the last one is what's called limited omniscient. This is the narrator knows only one character's thoughts and feelings and tells only that character's story. On the screen here, I have some pictures to help us understand these ideas. First, we have first person. That's where one character in the story is telling the story. So notice that in that slide, a character in the story is, is the view that we can see through. The next, it's third person limited. Now with third person limited, that means that the narrator is outside of the story and can only see through one character's uh, eyes, their thoughts and feelings. The last one is third person omniscient. Now this is where the narrator, that floating head at the top there, uh, the narrator knows what multiple characters are thinking and feeling and what they're doing. Number three is characterization. Now characterization is the process by which an author reveals the personality of the character. There are three types of characters I wanna focus you in on. The first is the protagonist, and this is the main character of the story. The second is the antagonist, and this is the character or force opposing the protagonist. So the antagonist is the one creating the problem. Go ahead. Write yourself a quick note next to number two uh, that this one, the antagonist is the one creating the problem. And the third one is foil. And this is a character who provides contrast to the protagonist. Now, if you're not sure what a foil is, uh, think about the story, The Diary of a Wimpy Kid. Okay, the main character is our protagonist. The older brother, Roderick, tends to be uh, the antagonist and create the problems. And then the protagonist, the main character's best friend, is the foil. He kind of provides contrast. He's very different than, his, uh, than the main character. Number four is theme. Theme is a major idea that supports a written work. Themes generally can be summed up in a few words. Ideas like family, true love, revenge, friendship. These would all be examples of themes in a, a piece might be about. So for example, with family, it could be family uh, is more important than friendship. With true love, it could be true love can be painful. Uh, revenge, it could be uh, revenge doesn't always turn out the way you want it to. You know, it's, it's like what you'd find in a fortune cookie or Hallmark card. It's just a quick idea. What's the lesson that uh, the story is teaching? All right, here comes number five, and that is type of conflict. And there are two main cat categories of conflicts. There's external, which is outside of self and there is internal inside of self. We have 
four basic types of uh, conflict. There's character against character, that's external. Character against nature, that's also an external conflict. Character against society, again external. And then character against self. Now this one's internal. That's within themselves. Now to help you understand this idea, I've got some visuals. If we look at this chart, you can see that external is taking place outside of the character. So these two are having a conflict. Internal though is inside of your own heart or mind. So she's super sad. Nothing outside of her that we can see is creating that problem, but she's super sad. All right, this, <laughs> this illustration is to show you the four types of conflict. And so first we have character versus character, there's character versus nature, character versus himself, and character versus society. So you can kind of visualize how each of those, uh, what each of those means. Number six, uh, our last section here is plot. And this is a sequence of related events in a story. It's basically what happens in the story. There are three types of plot arrangements I want to talk about. Most often a story is in chronological order. We have the beginning, the middle, and the end of the story. There's first event, second, third, on like that. The next one is a more creative type, and you might have read a couple of books like this. It's called In Media Arrests. And this is where the story begins in the middle of the action, it makes you feel like you got dropped into the middle of the story and you're not sure what's going on for a while. And then usually they'll do a flashback, uh, which means they go back in time and kind of explain some information. And the last type here is called episodic. And these are short plots occurring one after the other. This is different than a short story or a sequel. This is within the same story. Uh, a problem happens, it's solved, which leads to another problem, which is also solved, which leads to another problem, which is also solved. So they're like short episodes, but they all tie together. Looking at the plot diagram, I'm hoping that this looks familiar to you, though I've had students the last two years tell me they've never seen a plot diagram before, which is very concerning. Um, but just to show you what a plot diagram looks like for a story, we have the exposition, we have this, uh, which is where you have the setting and characters, and then we're going to use a fancy term where that arrow is. We're going to call that the inciting incident. That's where the conflict or problem happens. But we're not going to call it the problem anymore. We're going to call it the inciting incident. After that, there's a series of rising actions where the character is trying to solve the conflict that happened in the inciting incident, but they can't solve it. Other things happen, doesn't happen, that doesn't work, we're going to try this, that doesn't work. Then we get to the climax of the story, and that's where the final confrontation happens, and the problem is actually solved. Right after that, immediately after that problem is solved, we have the falling action. The following action is just what happened right after uh, the problem is solved. Following action and the last piece there, resolution, are often confused. And I tell my students that the resolution is the long-term outcome. That's where you're really going to see the theme. How did the characters change? What did they learn? Uh, when they went back to their lives after solving this problem, how were they changed in the long run? That's resolution. All right, go ahead and turn your worksheet over and let's talk about um, just a couple of things that students tend to struggle with. So oftentimes students can tell me the exposition of the story. If I ask them who's the main character, they can tell me. And where is it taking place? They can tell me. Rising action, falling action, they usually can find those. But it's that conflict, climax, and resolution. Oop, not conflict, inciting incident, uh, that are tougher to spot. So to help you find these tougher elements, I have three questions that you should ask yourself every time you are looking for these things. Number one, where does normal change for the character? That's the conflict. That's the inciting incident. Number two, where is the problem finally confronted and solved? Or they finally resolve the problem. That's the climax. And number three, what is the long-term outcome of the story? 
that's the resolution. What did the characters learn about life? That's your resolution. So now we're going to watch a short video. Um, and then after we get done watching the video, I want you to answer these questions. Where does normal change for the characters? That's the conflict. Where is the problem finally confronted and solved? That's the climax. And what is the long-term outcome of the story? It can be stated or implied. So we may not, they may not turn to us in the video or in the book and turn to the reader and say, and here's what we learned. But uh, we can figure it out, put the pieces together, as they say. All right, let's watch our video and we are going to complete a plot diagram on the video. <laughs> 